Now children, after learning the calculation of quartiles in individual series, we move to discrete series. This is the second series, discrete series in which you know very well that the frequency is given. Discrete series is a group data in which frequencies are given along with the items. So, in the discrete series, these are the steps what you are supposed to follow to calculate quartiles. First step is simple frequencies are converted into cumulative frequencies. As I told you in the discrete series frequencies are given, but frequencies are given in the simple form and you have to convert simple frequencies into cumulative frequency and you know how to convert these frequencies into CF. Second is Q1 is identified as the value of n plus 1 upon fourth item in the CF. CF is the cumulative frequency and you have to find out n plus 1 upon fourth item in the cumulative frequency to locate Q1. Third step is Q3 is identified as the value of 3 n plus 1 upon fourth item in CF. For Q1 you have to find out n plus 1 upon fourth item in CF and for Q, Q3 you have to find out 3 n plus 1 upon fourth item in the cumulative frequency series. Now let us see with an example it will be clear to you. This is the example given daily wages of 199 workers calculate Q1 and Q3. Here the data is given to you in the form of daily wages of 199 workers and out of this given data you have to calculate how much is Q1 and how much is Q3 and I told you earlier what is Q1, right? The whole series is divided into three parts. Second, one lower side is lower quartile is known as Q1 and upper quartile is known as Q3 and middle one is known as Q2 that is median. So, you have to find out Q1 and Q3. The data is given to you. Now, Q1 is size of n plus 1 upon fourth item as I told you here. Q1 is size of n plus 1 upon fourth item and Q3 is size of 3 n plus 1 upon fourth item. Now, first step is you have to copy down the data in the table form, wages as given here in the same order, frequency as given here in the same order, right? Along with the wages, you write down the frequencies. Third is convert simple frequencies into cumulative frequencies. You have to convert these frequencies into cumulative frequencies. Adding 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 plus 20 is 30 like this and you get the total 199 as it is given that these are the wages of 199 workers. So, same way the total should be here as 199 after adding up all the frequencies. Now, what is the next step? You are supposed to calculate Q1 and Q3. So, Q1 is equal to size of n plus 1 upon fourth item and I told you if you remember that every time first you have to write down the formula, then only put the values. Never start writing the values immediately. Sometimes children do this mistake. When they calculate Q1 or Q3 or any other data, then immediately they put the values, just keeping in mind the formula. But in this case, there are certain problems. First is that whatever formula you are visualizing or you are keeping in your mind, then that may work out wrong sometimes or the values you do not put properly, right? Because you are just imagining the formula. So, sometimes there may be error also and secondly, 
there are separate marks for writing down the formula for each calculation. Whenever you are calculating either mean, median, mode or quartiles whatever, separate marks are allotted for writing down the formula, maybe half mark or maybe sometimes one mark that depends upon the teacher. So, remember that every time whenever you start any calculation, first you have to write down the formula so that there is no chance of error and teacher also knows well that you know the formula properly and the calculation becomes simpler. So, Q1 is size of n plus 1 upon 4th item. Now, what is n here? n as I told you that is number of items and how many items are here? 199. So, n is 199 plus 1 upon 4th item. This is 200 upon 4th item. This is 50th item. Now, you have got 50th item and remember this is not Q1. This indicates 50th item indicates Q1, but you have to find out what is Q1. 50th item you have to find out in CF as I told you, told you here n plus 1 upon 4th item you have to find out in the CF. So, find out 50th item in the CF. Now, here you cannot see 50, but you know that 50 is more than 30 and it is less than 65. That means 50th item is here inside this figure, right. So, 50th item is here and in front of this whatever you get in the x column that will be Q1. So, find out 50th item that is n plus 1 upon 4th item and in front of this find out the value in x column and this will be your Q1. Clear? Similarly, Q3 is calculated. Q3 is size of 3 n plus 1 upon 4th item, right. Size of 3 into 200, n plus 1 is 200 upon 4th item. This gives you 1 50th item, not the Q3, but 1 50th item. Now, locate 1 50th item in the CF column it is here, it is more than 127 and less than 155. So, 1 50th item is inside this value and in front of this in the x column you have this figure and 70 becomes Q3. So, this is very interesting, stats is very interesting, it is the number of or it is a you can say it is a game of numbers. So, it is very easy to learn. The only thing learn the method properly, learn the formula, put the values and get the correct answer. So, this way we calculate Q1 and Q3 in case of discrete series, right. Now, what we are left with that is continuous series now. After discrete series, we will see how do we calculate quartiles in case of continuous series. Now, these are the steps what you are supposed to follow in case of continuous series and you know that continuous series means the series which have the class interval along with the frequencies. This is the group data which has the class interval. 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to uh, 30 and so on or maybe any other class interval and along with we have the frequencies. Now, here what are the steps? Find out Q1 by dividing n by 4. In the case of discrete series it was n plus 1 upon 4, but here you have to find out Q1 by dividing n by 4. Find out CF of Q1 class find out L1 of Q1 class, find out actual size of class interval of Q1 class and apply the formula. Now, in this case I have written down Q1 only because these steps we are visualizing that we are calculating Q1. When you are calculating Q3, then also you follow the same steps. So, Q1 or Q3, whatever is there, 
So, find out C f of q 1 or q 3 class, find out L 1 of q 1 and q 3 class, find out actual size of class interval of q 1 and q 3 class and apply the formula. For q 1 is L 1 plus n upon 4 minus C f upon f into i. You know this type of formula you have done in the case of which type of average that was median. But the only difference was this that it was n upon 2, here it is n upon 4 because median is dividing the series into 2 equal parts. So, it was n upon 2 and we had L 1 plus n upon 2 minus C f upon f into i. But in the case of q 1, this is 1 quarter of the series. So, it is n upon 4, this is 3 quarter of series, so 3 n upon 4 minus C f upon f into i. Now, we will see the calculation in the case of continuous series. This is the example given to you from the given wages calculate q 1 and q 3, q 2 we are not asking you to calculate because q 2 is the same as median and you have done calculation of median. So, we normally take q 1 and q 3. So, in this example you are supposed to calculate q 1 and q 3. Wages and workers